Okay, so here I am, Dominic Barrett, watching myself bowl the 2013 World Championships at the end of the World Series. Thanks for joining me. So, it's all just to really just talk a little bit throughout this uh, this game and let you know what I think. But it was a few years ago, I haven't turned any guys extra frames, so I'm not sure if my memory is that good. So we bowled a lot of games to get to this point, and now we're obviously bowling in an arena um, over at South Point, where typically the pins in the bowling centre fly around a lot more than they do in the arena setting. So actually this week Jim Callahan, my ball rep at the time, was talking me into using a much bigger core bowling ball, bigger um, cover stock bowling ball as well, because of that reason, so I can get the ball to roll a lot harder and a lot firmer. So yeah, first shot. There's a few nerves there. Definitely, you try and settle down, try and set your way into the into the arena setting. And Dom knows going into this title match that it's going to take a huge game. So there's a lot of state, a lot of things going on that you try and block out. You're not really trying to think about. What's going to happen at the end of the game, or what you did to get here? It's just you know you're bowling well. You're in the finals. You've obviously bowled well a week. And you just have to try and keep doing it. Because he's going to have to throw a lot of them. Don Barrett is a three-time World Bowling Writers Bowler of the Year, only male ever to win that award three straight times. Locking horns with the PBA Player of the Year here in the PBA World Championship. That's right, so the left lane was always a little tighter, I remember. Everyone else has ever said that on extra frame about these uh, the pair of lanes, but typically the right lane came off a little bit harder. The left lane had a little bit more hold. I'm not sure why I selected to finish first. It could have been because I wanted to get out of the way and wanted to put pressure on Sean sure if it came down to it, or I thought there might be more hold on the left lane late in the game. So we know that Sean bowls really well. He's bowled well the whole time we were at uh, South Point. Made a lot of TV shows. In one year, he made every single one. That was quite impressive. I think it was two years before this one. Yeah, he liked that uh, kicking that 10 out late. So for me as a bowler, I don't really like to look at my phone too much. I sort of get myself in my own little world of what I'm trying to do control my breathing in the background. That's always been a big thing for me is is breathing, making sure that my heart rate's not too high. Uh, so because when I practice at home in any situation or we bowl tournament, I don't practice with a high heart rate. My heart rate's usually in a fairly calm position if you like. So breathing for me is probably the biggest tip I can give anybody who gets into any pressure situations. Just trying to control your breathing, control your heart rate, get yourself settled so you can go and repeat any shot that you've done for years and years in practice. Good break there. No four seven standing with the other thing I don't like to do either. If I have to throw a shot straight after like Sean just did then I wouldn't get too amped up after throwing the first shot because within 30 seconds you're going to have to let go of the next one with the shot clocks we have on the side and the fact that it's your turn so you don't have as much time to get yourself settled so all right chop the six ten off the ten open frame you always get told to hit the pin in the front if you did that it's worth it you would have expected especially after the brilliant game he bowled against Weber. So when you see your opponent do that, which even though you try not to look at your opponent, no matter what sport you're playing, you always know what the score is, you always know what's going on. So, yeah, it's important now to go up there even more so to throw a good shot. Nothing you can do now except regroup and hope that Dom Barrett doesn't run away with it. Barrett on the double. I'd say that one's a little win. A little left. I think I rolled it okay, so. That was okay. Got the ball to roll with the pins pretty hard on that one. Arsenal, the bite. To my Arsenal there, so I'm not using the strongest ball. The Marvelous was a symmetrical ball. This one's the only asymmetric ball. Just out of that little arsenal there. Again, just to help with pin carry to get the ball to roll through the pins a little bit harder. 
Just bet your boy on the line. Our finest moment, our finest hour. Pulling oh, our best, we never threw it as good as Don Barrett throws it now. He says, I know, you're right. That was before we married, though. Barrett cranks it up in the fourth frame. Oh, hi, Corfin. Now, the last one that lane went light, so I didn't think that one was terrible. I think that shot wasn't too bad. I just overrolled it, made sure it picked up a little bit too hard. And stops right in front of the head pin, and it's probably a good thing. Probably, especially after missing left on the last one. Right lane. And leaving something a little bit more than just a four pin. Barrett picks up the spare, and as calm as his demeanor is on the outside, so, sake, these, these trousers, trousers I was wearing, down. to me, they were like trousers, slacks. Oh, yeah, well, they, they had pockets on the outside. Got, uh, so, as soon as I won, Kurt fined me $100 for that. So said I'm not allowed to wear any trousers that have pockets on the outside. They were too jean like, so that was $100. And then he asked me if I wanted to prepay my next TV show. He did not wear them again. I'll have to go and find them. I'm not sure if they're fit in store for him. Lane talk stats indicate it sure make the choice to go high that time. percent for Rash at the World Series and it cashes in there. Being the championship match is no commercial. If you're playing any other match, you have to you do have to make sure you know about that because there'd be nothing worse than getting up in the approach and getting told you have to wait. So but this one you don't have to worry about that, you can just get up and go. Helps him to stop. Ball a whole flowing game. Of that soul gets too smooth, player he loses that friction, that contact with the, the approach. So that's the other thing about traveling overseas. You can see Sean's family there. This year I didn't have anybody there, so it was a few friends and family. Well, no family, friends like Stu, Martin, uh, West Pine, Bosco is at the background, all the way over to the right, and. It's kind of just keeps it so more business-like having nobody there, if you like, but it's, I wouldn't say it's lonely, it's just more, Remember, he chopped the spear in the third frame. you still get to enjoy it, I'm not sure what I'm trying to go with there, but it's not, it is different, definitely, knowing that kind of in a foreign country, even though you know, I'm in the US so much right now, I think back then I wasn't here quite as much. So, the following year my uh, family came over and I didn't bowl quite as well, he also made a TV show, but um, yeah, lots of Jim Callahan in the background, all we're at, good friends with Jim, it's kind of like bowling a 300 game and then trying to get over that. Flush hit. Ten back. Yeah, not sure what I'm thinking about. <laughs> but it's a few years ago. Uh, that one was a pretty good one. So before, if I remember correctly, we had Tom Smallwoods and Mike Fagan may have played the first match. Then went on to play Pete Webber and then Sean. So there's four other right-handers. We all played the lane a little bit further to the right. So. They definitely broke down pretty well for this match. Somebody moved in the stands. Oh, nobody. An really excuse. I think get a fine. That's usually what happens. Whenever you see someone stop, I mean, there was the boom jig camera over that side, so it may have moved or whatever it may have been. But it's just for me, it's important when it happens just to reset, go back, start your pre-show routine again, let that whole shot go. And just start again. If you start thinking about, oh, it looks like I haven't done that anything, then you already think about the wrong thing. So there's no excuses now. I have to reset. On the approach, sixth frame, working a strike, increases lead. Yeah, tight ring. Right, that was good. Yeah, that's about as excited as Dom's gonna get. It's a good confirming what he feels with his tour rep. Now, let's take a look at this game. Look at that cuffed wrist and that elbow snap. So looking back now at how I bowled a few years ago, it's all, everything for me keeps up my right shoulder. So I'm actually looking back now thinking, how far back is my right shoulder? How low did it get? Mostly this is the best period I've ever bowled in my life where kind of dominated the World Series. If you're Sean Rash, you gotta be asking yourself. From start to finish. 
the, uh, obviously had a good result of this TV show as well. So it's funny game. how you look back at stuff and still trying to look for things that will help you in today's environment. Seven pin? Really? That power and 16 pounds of mass? Sean drank a little bit firmer than I am. Although seven. Looks like my pin carry. Rash fills the frame, running out of frames. Coming up next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, World Ball Tour Finals, World Finals World. Women's Division. Missy Parkin, Liz Johnson. Pretty strong lineup. And the tournament and leader. Look at today with the younger girls coming through. Also on that same show, the men's division. Mika, so for in UAE now. Mike Fagan, head coach. Mike's gone on to some further education. And still bowls uh, quite a lot from what I hear. Sean Rash taking some extra time and a re rack. He's got four Sean, frames like and a 30 still foot until losing his head. To manage. He that happens all the time, so don't worry. There might be something in that though. I think, look at a lot of sportsmen. That happens because we've got a lot of uh, golfers. And... So, Sean starts bowling really good now. He hasn't particularly bowled really well so far, and not that I was really paying attention either, but just looking at what the scores from the start. You know, the trash talking's great, but he's not getting in Dom Barrett's. Dome anytime soon. This kid's full I'm of international. So I'm up obviously by quite a few at the moment. So there's not really a lot of pressing from me coming on here like there was for Sean on that last shot. It's more about trying to keep control of my emotions, trying to keep control of what shot I'm going to throw. Here in the seventh and eighth frame, can make sure you up and execute to 54 with two more strikes. Mixing and uh, he has a seven pin. So I'm probably inching left all at a time, maybe. Just trying to stay ahead of transition because right now I'm in a pretty dominating position. I don't need to try and jump too far left or try and throw it too hard. So that's probably why that ball went a little bit high on that lane. Just trying to keep control of the match. Make the spares. I don't do anything silly by now. A uh, good uh, visualization there for sure. I mean, he's under the gun right now. He needs to pretty much strike out. He's put a three or four in a row. World Championship. Trying to take it home and earn his first major title on the PBA Tour. Leads by 33, working a spare, a frame. Good indeed. Well, Barrett, your tournament leader. Well, they go that one pretty nicely. Chose to finish on that left lane. One floor wasn't quite as good, a little bit firmer. Nice that one's there. pretty decent, especially on the tire lane. Nice loose arm swing, shoulders get open, wrist and elbow snap at the bottom, 10 in the pit, oh hum. Now Sean Rash must score in there in the eighth frame as well. You get up to the tenth. I don't know that I need it right now, but in my opinion, to have any chance of winning. You need that sort of confidence where you know you don't have to move your feet, you don't sort of get around too much. It's a double for Rash, cuts the lead to 23 pins. Sean having to dig in. Good job. Control of my breathing. So, especially coming from, I not especially coming from a foreign country, but you know, this is what it's all about without actually thinking about it at the time. So, of everything that's, that you've done in your whole life that's bowling related is all building up to sort of this next moment for a major. It doesn't really get any bigger than majors in bowling, maybe your play of the year or. But that all comes from moments like this. He doesn't strike here. He he has no chance of winning. Because Don Barrett's not going to go back to back open frames. Hold on, my finger. So there was a time where Sean used to balk and you know he'd miss, but. There's a timing bar. Look at that. There's a field ball. Well, he smashed his finger. Back right, watch his shoes. It takes the time. He should have blamed someone in the crowd. He got high. 
staying with the same routine. That's what Whatever you got to do really to sort of reset yourself and make sure you have no excuses for when you step up and try and deliver the ball this time. I don't think I'm thinking about much of this right now. Deep breaths. Runs it out, let me know about it. You know, he's done it. You don't really think much of it, or I try not to. You just try to, he doesn't really have any influence over me getting up his next couple of shots. It's still me, that one bowling ball and 10 pins, there's nothing else. You know, you all these people watching at home, you people in the crowd, people in your family. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of pressure on you, doesn't it? But really, if you think about it, it's you trying to get a strike. How many strikes have you got with your life? I am practice, everywhere else is just a different environment, different atmosphere. You need to try and set yourself, get yourself back to sort of that neutral heart rate. So that one flat 10, I thought that was actually a pretty good one. Watch this uh, back once or twice after it happens and I remember at the time that was a pretty good shot so sort of took positives from that one, I threw it good. That's really all you can do. Stay down. And I went light last time on that lane and almost 5 7. The ball was losing energy. I think that's what actually was happening. The ball sort of lost energy. And like I said before, I wasn't keeping up with the moves. Trying to stay sort of safe. Spare for Barrett. And now we move to the 10th frame. Ball in hand for Dom Barrett. He can control his destiny and claim. So over to the right is the scoreboard. I've been asked this a lot. So right now, I'm thinking I need. Two strikes. People were sat in front of the scoreboard, and I've got an idea what it is. For some reason, I think Sean's got worse count than he's got. I thought we'd bowl like 232 or something, and I'm looking at 238. So I think I need like a double and four or five pins. So, yeah, first one to Portland. Again, that lane has a little bit more hold for me, it's not losing energy. Calm under pressure. So now in my head, I think everybody knows this, I'm thinking I need a strike in like four, so I'm gonna get a strike and I'm gonna throw it hard at the middle and not foul, and that's pretty much the plan. So I go back, get some water. This is a shot that I think I need to win. I gotta get some water, I'll take a re-rack, come back. And that's all for my heart rate. All that is is trying to slow me down, I'm trying to get back into that position where I can control my heart rate, get back to the point where I'm back under control. He got there and I believe he threw it right now. I mean, it could go two mile an hour faster off your hand. You just have to try and slow yourself down. Slow down your breathing. Deep breaths are very important in my pre shot routine on TV. I don't probably take as much when I'm doing qualifying, but certainly on TV. So I'm thinking this is the one. And off I go. <laughs> it's not over yet. He still needs eight on the fill. I just hope that I just hope that Dom knows what the scoreboard is. So now I've heard everyone saying you still need eight or whatever it was. I still don't even know what they're saying. But then I've gone, oh okay. I need more than I thought because otherwise everyone would be cheering up with me. So all right. So now I know that I need a bit more. This is something I don't normally do. I picked up my ball and said, okay, hit the pocket because I can't need more than hitting the pocket. So as you see, it's a little faster, a little firmer, and it strikes. So even though I miscounted, I'm quite happy with how I handled the situation. And yeah, go and hug Jimmy. And that's just, um, you know, the whole bowling career, my bowling career. Thanking Bill Christman, who's supported me for a number of years. Lanigan. And everyone, the whole Storm team, West Pye at the background, they were fantastic. Let me get to that position in my career. And yeah, it's like a big family. So yeah, I'm thinking right now, you know, kind of done it. You've kind of got to a point where all the hard work you've ever sort of had to do in bowling and the hard work that you've put through in this week, even though you don't know how it's going to work out if you bowl that good, kind of did. So. That's pretty much my story. That's pretty much what happened to me, how I got through that TV show. Thanks for joining me, seeing through it all. Uh, my perspective, one of the best shots of my life, that shot there. 
And I don't normally do that, but that was a whole lot of emotion coming out of, at that point, 28 years of my whole life and 16 years of bowling. So thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll get to do another one of these fairly soon.